Coming up tonight, relief on the horizon. Pilots are part of the Bahamas Airline Pilots Association could soon finalize a new industrial agreement. Plus, the month of March has been designated Local Government Month. The minister says it's important to recognize the impact. And later, Sweet Emily taking over the Jazz in the Garden stage over in Miami. Our Italia Hall was there. These stories and so much more as our news weekend starts now. This is our news weekend. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm Megan Shepard. Pilots, represented by the Bahamas Airline Pilots Association, or BILPA, are poised to experience a sense of relief shortly after a new industrial agreement with Bahamas Air Management appears to be on the verge of being finalized. After several months of negotiations, BALPA and Bahamas Air executives have made substantial progress at the negotiation table. Bahamas Air Managing Director Tracy Cooper spoke to the strides being made. We're pretty much at the tail end of the negotiation with the Pilots Union. Uh, we intend to have that wrapped up hopefully in another week or so. The one thing we can say is that it's been very amicable. Um, we have sat around the table. Uh, we've uh, discuss the issues and we've come to terms uh, and have been able to shake hands on uh, practically all of the um, articles. So at this point it's just a matter of rewriting, rewording and just uh, signing up the document. The month of March has been designated Local Government Month, established and implemented in the Family Islands in 1996. It's been praised as bringing government closer to the people, delivering public services, and providing a greater degree of autonomy to the residents of these islands. Minister of Works and Family Island Affairs Clay Sweeting says it's important to recognize the impact local government has, especially on the family islands. The month of March provides us with an opportunity to reflect on the remarkable achievements of local government and the family islands once again where its impact continues to be transformative and underscores the vital role that local government plays in the development of our family islands. The success of local government throughout these islands is a testament to the commitment and the resilience of family island communities as we have witnessed substantial improvements in infrastructure and community service and overall the positive impact in the lives of our family islanders and their community. The minister also highlighting the noteworthy achievements for local government in recent years. Most notably the establishment of junior local government and new legislative framework. The Family Islands Affairs Minister also unveiling the lineup of events and activities over the next four weeks. And marking this year's local government month activities such as simultaneous flag racing ceremonies will be held on March 8th. And we encourage the public to join in the flag racing ceremonies throughout the Family Islands and at local government headquarters here in New Providence. Other events include local government professionals worshiping together on March 10th at various places of worship in recognition of God's blessings and guidance. Other events around the country will mark local government month. We invite the public and the family islands to participate in all events marking Local Government Month. A gesture of international solidarity and goodwill displayed after the Chinese Embassy in the Bahamas donated items that will help healthcare patients undergoing rehabilitation, providing them with increased independence and mobility. In a handover ceremony held at the Sandilands Rehabilitation Center on Thursday, Bahamas Public Hospital Authority Managing Director Dr. Kiva Thompson says the items are much needed. Mobility is a daily challenge that impacts their independence, and their quality of life. The donation of these mobility aids will not only enhance their, their ability to move around safely, but it will also provide them with a sense of freedom and dignity. With these aids, our clients will be able to participate more freely in their daily activities. They will be able to engage with others and access the services that they need. 
The donation includes assistive devices like wheelchairs, crutches, and walking aids. The Chinese ambassador to the Bahamas, Ching Li Dai, expressing her country's commitment to assisting the Bahamas. She says the inspiration behind the donation came after Sandlin stepped in to assist Chinese residents needing care at the facility. We have a Chinese worker working in the Bahamas in the, the Thomas Robinson Stadium. Um, she suddenly suffered some psychiatric problems. So Sandy Lenz was kind enough to admit her. Actually, that was not the first time that Sandy Lenz has treated Chinese citizens very kindly. Um, you know, a, a couple of years ago, we have a Chinese patient here who lived here for like you know, more than one year um, before she was repatriated uh, to China. Um, and she had very good care, I must say, on this facility. We were very grateful for the support and the care she was able to get. And the Sandilands even sent two doc uh, one doctor to accompany her back to China. Police in Abaco are investigating a traffic accident that has left one man with a severed limb. According to police, shortly after 10 p.m. on Saturday, the male driver of a red 2019 Nissan Frontier was traveling west on George Aubrey Boulevard when he reportedly lost control and collided with a utility pole and an unoccupied parked car. The driver, who was the sole occupant of the vehicle, suffered serious injuries, including severing his left arm. He was transported by EMS personnel to the local medical clinic for attention. He will be airlifted to New Providence for further medical care. When our news comes back from the break, we've got the sights and sounds of Sweet Emily as she brings the sweet sounds of Bahamian music to Jazz in the Gardens. Plus, the celebration of women continues. Our news highlighting amazing Bahamian women doing amazing things for the community. That's coming up when our news weekend returns. turning out for the 17th annual Jazz in the Gardens Music Festival in Miami, Florida. There was lots of food for concert goers to choose from, from Southern American food, Chinese, seafood, and even Bahamian food. Top artists like Omarion, Rick Ross, Fantasia, Jasmine Sullivan, and Kirk Franklin all performed. But the highlight of the night for many Bahamians was the performance of music legend Sweet Emily. Bahamians turning out in full force to dance to the Bahamian sounds and junk new. Our news team speaking with Sweet Emily following her performance. She says this is a huge opportunity. I've been wonderful. I just thank God. I'm humbled by the opportunity. Um, I've always prayed to be on a stage like this and to see the door just open. Unbeknown to me, I was just blown away by the fact that to be able to do it and actually be here. And even with the time church, well, everything just shifted. My, and I just watch how things just shifted um, with the time and everything. And I was able to get the lights and all that. So it's a wonderful feel. I love being a Bahamian. And I want to take the music to the world. And she's also grateful for the support from Bahamians. I just want to say thank you to all the Bahamians that came out. There's a lot of Bahamians out here. Some people came out earlier because they knew that I was supposed to be on earlier. But they stopped and they stayed. And I mean, I saw all the people. In fact, I know all these people. Most of them, I know them. And they told me they were coming. And they are here. So, two for two. That's all I can say. Now, our Italia Hall will have a full report from the Mega Show and Sweet Emily in Monday's newscast. Be sure to tune in. Six Bahamian women coming together to provide invaluable keys to overcoming the obstacles and challenges of life. Golden Key Anthology combines the life stories of four women from the capital and two Grand Bahamians. CEO of SRS Management and Assistant Professor at the University of the Bahamas, Dr. Shamel Roll Sands, explaining to me that the book is the brainchild of Aisha Johnson. She thought that this would be particularly important um, to be released around this time, International Women's Day, to amplify the voices of Bahamian women so that persons can hear our stories. Because as she likes to say, our stories may be about us, but they are not for us. And this is um, our way 
of sharing our stories. Dr. Roll San says she's excited to share her story and is confident the book will make an impact not only throughout the Bahamas, but the world. Here's what she hopes readers take away from the anthology. I think for me, the takeaway would be that with perseverance, persistence, planning, and prayer, and recognizing that there are times when there is power in the pivot, when you need to shift in order to accomplish your goals. CEO of MBS MediSpa Diagnostics, Ava Williams, will also be sharing her personal keys to overcoming adversity. She says being a part of the anthology was a dream, as she loves to encourage, empower, and uplift others. Sometimes we find ourselves in a place where we feel like we may have failed, we may have been disappointed by things that we may have been pursuing, but that is not the end game. That is not your opportunity to give up, more so it's your opportunity to push forward. And I just want to encourage women and actually even, yes, even men, uh, of any background, whether it be you're an entrepreneur and you're seeking to scale your business or you're seeking to venture out into something that you haven't tried before, just knowing that it is within you, knowing that through your faith, being able to trust in God and knowing that he's going to turn everything around for your good. Friday was International Women's Day, but of course, the hard work of women across the country and around the world continues year-round. Women like Adina Monroe Charlo, MBE, chairperson of the British Legion Bahamas branch. In this report, she speaks with our Marlena Leonard about the importance of finding your passion through service. Chairperson of the British Legion Bahamas branch, Adina Monroe Charlo, was recently recognized and even awarded an MBE by King Charles III after being listed on the King's New Year Honours List. This International Women's Day, we asked her what message she has for young women when it comes to giving back. I will encourage young women uh, to uh, take on something that you have passion for. I am very passionate in this work, and um, I treat every registered member as a mother or a father, and um, I take it on. Anyone, you know, deals with them, they deal with me. And so I represent them well, and I will encourage the women to find something that they have passion for. This year's International Women's Day theme is Inspire Inclusion, their official website describing it as a call for action to break down barriers, challenge stereotypes, and create environments where all women are valued and respected. Monroe Charlo definitely challenged stereotypes on her road to chairperson, joining the Royal Bahamas Defense Force Reserves at 45 years old and completing basic training. It was at a, a time when I was a little older, but um, it was necessary to do so in order to maintain the legacy of Bahamian war veterans and uh, widows. And so I had to just make up my mind uh, to wake up 5 a.m. in the morning and run five miles <laughs> with a smile and to also ensure to the state that they are receiving their, their war pensions. When we came to interview her for this story, she was still busy at work serving the Bahamas' remaining World War II veterans and their widows. We even got a visit from Comrade Vernon Pinder. The chairperson shares this message for women. Happy International Women's Day and um, to all the sisters and to ensure that uh, we keep our Bahamas um, in the forefront internationally and also to uh, represent our country well. Reporting for Our News, I'm Marlena Leonard. Thanks so much, Marlena. Well ahead on Our News Weekend, Our News to the Islands continues the fun over in Acklands. Our Candino Knowles has an inside look at a five-star B&B perfect for your next getaway. Plus, the 2024 Griff, the swim team is announced and the Bahamian repeats as a double NCAA indoor champion. Sunday Sports is up next. Welcome back. 
The Out Island Promotion Board is collaborating with us to unveil the splendor of our islands through our latest series, Our News to the Islands. This time, the spotlight shines on Acklands as our news anchor, Candino Knowles, embarks on a week-long adventure, starting with last night's guide on reaching Acklands. Tonight's episode explores accommodation options for those with Acklands on their bucket list. Meet Velma Gibson Ferguson a proud Acklands Islander and the proprietor of Ivald's Bed and Breakfast. The property boasts a stellar five-star rating on TripAdvisor. This place, Ivald's, is supposed to be a vacation home, okay? Turn out to a B&B because when after we were done with the building the place and people were asking for accommodation. Velma shares the story of Ivald's humble beginnings. However, after a visit from the late former Governor General Arthur Hanna in 2006, she says the establishment's success skyrocketed. The administrator didn't have a place for him to live. So he came to me and said, Ms. Ferguson, the Governor General need a place to live. I said, well, listen, your officers are taking up the four rooms that I do have and I don't have any more rooms. So he said, well, you'll have to give him your room. You know, it was a joke. After my husband saw that, he said, you know something, honey, we need to build some more rooms. And that they did. Velma and her late husband expanded their business, naming each room after their seven children. Seeing that the governor general is the cause of me building these buildings, I give them the governor general suite the Prime Minister's suite. Guest reviews speak volumes, describing Ivald's as a hidden gem. And from a time not so long ago, one visitor wrote, a perfect COVID hideaway. With its warm hospitality and communal meal settings fostering connections among guests, it's no wonder visitors eagerly anticipate returning. This morning we have in tuna and grits, scramble egg and papaya from Crooked Island actually. We've enjoyed many meals like this one in the kitchen at Ivald's with Velma's son Donald who manages the space. And at nighttime, Ackland's nocturnal wildlife have come out to greet us. Like this hermit crab that joined the welcome party and gave this hail to our digital content manager Ricky Barry who joined us on the trip. Yeah, hospitality is a family legacy, legacy and that's, that's a fact. That's a fact and anyone who from Acklands and they know uh, my family, they would say it. And we would certainly say the same. Our Acklands adventure presses forward with a day of fly fishing, a true test of patience and a nod to my New Year's resolution of 2023. Join us as we continue to uncover the wonders of Acklands. All the way from Mason's Bay Acklands reporting for our news, I'm Candino Nodes. Thanks so much, Candino. Well, we know who will make up the 2024 Carifta swim team, and Terrence Jones scorches the track. Tage Adderley is here with our Sports Weekend. Tage. Good evening. Happy Sunday. I'm Tage Adderley here with the Our Sports Weekend edition. The 2024 Carifta Aquatics team has been announced following the last chance meet held yesterday at King's College. Team Mahamas for the 2024 iteration of the Carifta Aquatics game set to be held in New Providence beginning March 28th at the Betty Kelly Kenning Aquatic Center has been officially named. There are 20 girls on the team and 16 boys, a total of 36 swimmers. The head coach of the team is Trevano McPhee. For the complete list of team members and coaches, go to our social media pages. Now we're going to head over to the court where Coach O and the Rebels were ousted from the SEC Conference Tournament. The Rebels fell to the Louisiana State Tigers 75-67 to last night in the conference tournament in Greenville, South Carolina. LSU managed to take an early lead going up 31-21 to with three minutes left in the first half, but Ole Miss got themselves back in the game, bringing the game to within one early in the fourth. Madison Scott led the Rebels with 22.7 rebounds and four assists, and Marquisha Davis had 21-5-5. Tiger superstar forward Angel Reese had 21 points and she pounded the glass for 17 rebounds. Coach Yo has no regrets. I thought it was a fought hard game. I thought both teams really um, <clears throat> competed for 40 minutes. I thought, you know, you're not going to hear any crying about me about the officiating or anything like that. I thought it was a well-officiated game for the most part. 
Now we're sticking to the NCAA, but we're going to move to the track. Terrence Jones has done it again. The Texas Tech Sprinter won the national 60 meter and 200 meter titles yesterday. The sprinter from Grand Bahama took home two gold medals at the NCAA Indoor National Track and Field Championships in Boston yesterday. He won the 200 meters in a time of 20.23 seconds and the 60 in a time of 6.54. Another Bahamian, Wendy McCoy of the University of Florida, came seventh in the 200 meter race, finishing in a time of 25.60 seconds. He also came fourth in the 60 meters in a time of 6.60 seconds. Congratulations to Jones on another set of titles. He isn't done winning hardware just yet. Outdoor season is right around the corner. That does it for sports for the weekend. I'm Tage Adley. Have a great week. Thanks, Tage. On the other side of this break, E. McKenzie joins us from the Weather Center with a look at temperatures across the country. Stick with us. for sticking with us. Well, we are officially winding down the weekend, but to help you plan for the week ahead, weather-wise, Ian McKenzie has your extended forecast. Thanks, Megan, and good evening, Bahamas. Here's your Sunday forecast. We are currently outside our studios. We're under partly cloudy skies with a temperature of 82. Our winds are from the west as that front pushes through 13 miles per hour. Comfortable feels like temperature of 71. Current temperatures across the country at this time. In Freeport, we have 74, 75 in Marsh Harbor, 80 in Great Harbor Key, 77 in Alice Town, Bimini, 80 in Nichols Town, 78 in Governor's Harbor, and 82 in the Capital. Central Bahamas, 81 in Camp Space, 79 in Georgetown and Edmonds Key, 78 in Arthur's Town, Kid Island, 80 in Coburn Town, San Salvador. In the Southeast Bahamas, we have 79 in Duncan Town, as well as Colonel Hill, 78 in Delectable Bay, 80 in Abraham's Bay, 81 in Providentialis, and Matthew Town in Nagua. First look now at our satellite and radar imagery. Just follow this line of showers as it pushes through the area. This is all associated with a funnel system where we expect cooler conditions inside its wake as it pushes through the capital sometime later this evening. Boating forecast, a small craft cautious in effect across the northwest and central islands. Those winds will be west and northwest, shifting north to northeast at 15 to 20 knots tomorrow. Seas 4 to 6 feet, high tide at 8.54 p.m. tonight, low tide at 3.11 a.m. tomorrow morning. The southeast Bahamas, those winds will be variable at 10 knots or less seas, only running one to three feet. Very comfortable boating conditions. In your extended forecast, we have breezy conditions expected tomorrow in the wake of that funnel system. Pleasant conditions, temperatures only reaching the upper 70s, popping back into the 80s by midweek. However, those low temperatures should climb into the upper 60s and eventually reach into the low 70s by midweek. That's a wrap in the evening forecast. Make it a great safe. Fun night, everyone. Thanks, Ian, and thank you for joining us for our news weekend. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Megan Shepherd. Have a safe and wonderful evening.